already pushed in that same arc or the same path that the bench is gonna go on. So more like here, like with yep. my chest proud? Or yes. Like yeah. Which we're probably gonna see it slow down now. <coughs> see? That's slower. Yes. Because you're used to the overhead. <laughs> you like it. And that's fine because you're an overhead athlete. But see the difference. So the second exercise on a dynamic bench day is to address the weak point, which yours is a little different because of the way it's structured. For a lot of people, it's normally going to be like some type of tricep movement or something like that. And it's going to be in a high of five rep range. I kept it in the five rep range there. As we move down that training day, obviously the rep ranges are going to increase mm -hmm. and the exercises are going to become more, less compound, more isometric, stuff like that. So <clears throat> I don't want to do like a, a heavy barbell tricep movement because of all the dynamic work that we've already done, but I do want to hit the triceps hard, right. you know, for something in the six to eight rep range. Right. So this is kind of where it's like shared programming. If it's somebody that's out here, you know, it's, I still want that range that we're talking about. So it can be like rolling tricep extensions would be mm -hmm. one example. Um, it could be um, a zigzag bar, JM press, you know, you, what, what do you think? And you want to do barbell, dumbbell, uh, I'd rather do something dumbbell. All right, so we'll do like a dumb, almost a dumbbell version of a JM press Perfect. is what this is going to be. Yeah, so we'll perfect. head over. Right, I'm going to have you just use the regular bench. I do have a pad that goes over two benches here, which is kind of like a floor press version. <laughs> I do like the tricep stuff on the floor a lot because we can take the leg out of it. Okay. But the problem is if I put you here, get in the rib cage where I want it to be, because I want to reinforce that still, mm. it's not going to happen okay. because you're going to be your feet up there is like, like a floor thing you. yeah so we'll go ahead and leave this on here at a slight incline so with these are we kind of doing where we can, just come down like this yeah but just roll your elbows back a little bit then roll them a little bit forward and then press up so it's just it's, think of like the you know what a jam press is right yep so your wrists are going to kind of do the same thing so it's going to drop it's going to roll just a little bit then roll a little bit and then press up so it's just a warm-up set when the dumbbells get wider this will be way easier for you to do because what happens is see it, you, your arm bends more than it needs to. Yeah, Normally sure. you'll come up when the forearm hits the bicep. The head of the dumbbell will create less, yes. less space there. Yeah, so just warm up real good there. Then we'll probably go to the 65s. For those that can get there, these are awesome when you can start to get to like the 100s and the 110s because it shortens that range enough to almost completely mimic that JM press with the barbell. Look at the weight so much, I'm looking at the size of the head see that's a big jump here yeah this is going to be easier and feel better but then if we went here okay because yeah. that hits sooner because as soon as it hits you're going to roll yeah and then press so hit roll press so I'll go to 65s next That's good. Don't don't fatigue yourself at all. Five or six. All right. Just go on feel. <laughs> so this one you're gonna drop like you're gonna bench. Then was hits there. Roll just a little bit. Good. So let the dumbbell hit. Roll a little and up. Right there. Perfect. Now this one you can use a little bit more force. Good. Six will be good. Nice. Roll. Good. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah. I don't want to use force until I ever mind. Yes. Well, on this one, you're not going to use force coming out of that bottom. You're, you'll keep using that way. Okay. And you're going to want to hit. It's going to roll. Then when you roll here then is you when you're going to yeah. drive, right? So as you become more comfortable with the weight, it feels right in your wrist. You'll start, when it hits, it's going to hit more flat. Because okay. right now you're kind of hitting at an angle. Yeah. You'll, you'll figure it out as you're doing it. It's yeah. going to feel more comfortable. It'll hit flat. You'll be able to even roll back more because that roll can create even okay. more momentum. Okay. To where you yeah. see, it's, you yeah. see how it mimics that same yeah. JM press. Do you keep your hands a little bit lower? Um, I keep them up higher. Higher here? No, or, or the here? other way, there. There, all right. So when I'm up here. Yeah, so see that roll becomes easier and easier, more yeah. yeah. See, right there. So now that's a flathead roll press. Good, just like that.
Good. Now we're in a mid, uh, kind of a weird place in a program. If the cons get the way, I'm going to run it through. So okay. at this point, the real work's done, right? So if there was somebody that I feel is overreaching and they need a break, I think you're done. You know, yeah. it'd be whatever it's going to be. Or if it's somebody that's not, you know, they need to build muscle, what I'll tell the younger kids are, you know, just go do your hypertrophy shit. Okay. And they just do whatever they want to do from there. Um, for more of a structure from it, you definitely want to hit rear delts. You know, you want to hit you want to hit delts at all, but you want to focus a lot on the rear yes. delts. You know, just for the stability of the bench mm -hmm. and all the other things that are there. So we'll do some of the rear delt swings. You know, because <clears throat> the prone bench is here, you probably don't have a prone bench, so you may as well use what you can. Yeah. And then and the reps go up. Okay. You know, and it becomes more bodybuilding yeah. oriented. Lats are the weird one, right? Because everybody's like, where do lats go? Mm -hmm. Especially if you're going to squat tomorrow, you know, do you want to fatigue your back? It's a main stabilizer in squat. So lats are the one that I just, if I put it in anywhere, it's going to be on a bench day that it would not be a day before a squat, right? So, it, and it won't, if we, we squat on Saturday and we bench on Sunday. So I won't have anybody do lat work on Saturday, you know, so that lat work would be on the other leg. It doesn't yeah. really matter. I just don't want it before a back really back. really heavy squat or even deadlift day. Right. any other time it can go in there yeah right um personally i'll have phases where i'll just have my own lat day so it'll just be a different day that's mm -hmm. going to follow in the week that's got a rest day after it yeah because it can either be high volume or low volume is however you want to do it but you could realistically get your lats done in two or three exercises and be done uh -huh. or just blast the shit out of them yeah. if you want it's just whatever you want in there but the reason I'm putting that out there is that's the one thing that people always get all fucked up about okay. is where to put that in there. Biceps are another one, you know, whatever, you know, just yeah. put them on. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just get you know, it there. doesn't matter. People get too caught up in that stuff. If it's somebody that's just a straight bodybuilder, it's a different mm -hmm. conversation. Gotcha. You know, it's going to break out. So we'll do the prone um, dumbbell swings. Meadows, you know, the little, the little tiny swings, right? Okay. So you're gonna let the, <laughs> just let your upper back relax. So you don't want your upper back. You're working. You just want rear delts. Swing out just a little. That's probably too much. Just all oh, keep right here is where you're looking to start to feel it burn. You can switch your grip a little bit if you want, just to try to. This is where you want to feel it. And then if when you find that position where you feel it, you're gonna want to run like 30 to 50 reps. So that's even probably too big of a swing. Yes, because you want to keep the, you don't want this, you want to relax it down here. Oh, wow. Yes. So, so now you can see how much more that's starting to light up and fire. So you don't want it here, you want to feel it here. Is it, where, is it a rear delt? Yep. How much here? Um, not, not as Just much. Just like more. a stretch, right? Yeah. Okay, yes, right there is what you want to do. Burning yet? We're getting there. Probably go a little bit. Yeah, then just drop it. Yeah. You only need one big set here. Yeah, I could probably go a little bit heavier, but yeah. I, I, once I released, I was like too tight, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, people do like the yeah. like mid range, or they think they're yeah. doing a full weird. It's just a swing. I can feel the pump now for sure. Yes. But uh, I think at first couple, I was, or first, you know. Yeah, so there could be, I don't know several. how the felt bells break up here, but this one here. You don't want grip to be an issue either here. That one might be closer to it. Just do that. Oh yeah, these are gonna be better. Alright, so remember let it hang so it stretches first. That kind of takes all that out. Then right in the rear delts. 30 to 50 would be the range you're looking for. I think I'm gonna go a little bit more. Out? Yeah, a little bit more. There. <laughs> but the 
thing with a push down with a normal handle is so you got a normal handle the range of motion is always going to be somewhat limited right because you can only pull it so far apart now with this one here I can get way up in here nice but if you have a rope or something that you can get really far out like this you can never really get up here mm -hmm. right so I like the muscle mace because you can go you can hit all so down here see I can get way out here mm -hmm. but I can't really get up in here really good we're here I get up in here but I can't get down right past more in here so if you hit eight eight and eight you know in a I don't I don't even want to say it's like a drop set or a tri set yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's <clears throat> then you're gonna hit off you're gonna hit all okay. full range with that so this one you're worried about just flexing and pulling apart is that too late how many reps 21 total uh, this, this should be good okay so flex hard and hold the hold one two then so flex one two good good if this falls into that stupid bodybuilding crap that I would call it and then get the most out of it That way you don't have to do six sets. You can just do a few really, really good ones. That's, no, no, go to the next handle. It's eight for each oh, handle. Oh, eight per yeah. each one, oh. Yeah, that's what I meant by 21. It, it may be a little light. Yeah, okay. I thought you meant per. Yeah, okay, good. Per. All right, go. So flex, good. Flex, nice. Good. Good. There you go. So on this one, you're not going to get a big flex, but you want a big stretch at the All top right. of each one. Burning now, boys. Yes. So still flex, and then get that full stretch. Okay. Don't let. Yes. There you go. Hit it. Good. Make sure to hold the flex. Hold one, two. Good. One, two. There you go. Good. Control the tempo for now. There you go. Good. Do another set of those. Really, really heavy stuff. I mean, at the end, you kind of want to leave with that little pump. Yeah. Right. So it's. Yeah, I'm definitely. I don't like to say get the pump. I, I like to think of it more as blood mm -hmm. being put in there to be able to help yeah. flush things yeah, it's around. Definitely ain't working now. The, the kids love it though because you can get the main work in, and then the trade off is here's this back end stuff that you can just, just go and yeah, yeah train bias, tries, lats, whatever. Hold the flex on these. Just hold it for like a one count. One, good. One, good. Right. I'm gonna lower it just a little bit on this top. Oh man. man. All right, go. Go, go, go. It's lighter, so it's gonna stretch better. Yeah, I didn't want to keep it heavy. Yeah, scary. you would have resisted the stretch too much. Get that stretch. Get it. Get it big. There you go. Good. Okay. So the cool thing is this. I mean, there's. For some people, I, at the end of the session, depending upon, you work with a lot of kids. I may have them finished with hanging leg raises and stuff like that, just things yeah. that need to be in there. The, but the takeaways just from the one day, you know, this, this, is, this is why I'm so conjugate biased, is the takeaways just from this one training session, we know what your speed three week phase could look like, or if you wanted to do it for five weeks, you know how to break it up. You know the start percent, end percent. You also know what weight in, to, to use the chains, you know, yeah, or, yeah. Or, or with the bands. And we found whatever the weak point was, started to address it right now. So you'll know before the next training session if it's actually all a neural or a strength thing. Then we jumped into, you know, the heavy tricep work and then just the bodybuilding stuff. But this is when you look at how many 
you know, I call it stacking wins. Everybody wants to, you know, win the day, win the day, win the day. That's fine. You can win the day. But if they don't stack, it doesn't mean shit. Yeah. Right. So we have like three big stackable wins. Right. So knowing what that dynamic range mm -hmm. is, is one. Actually, there's more. You know, the rib cage is a big cue for mm -hmm. you on the bench. So there's two. And then the, the explosive strength, finding out. That's just neurally getting it tuned in yeah. for a vertical, for, or yes, yeah, for the horizontal, horizontal press, pressing, right? Yeah. It's there, I, we know it's there. Yeah. But it's just getting it neurally turned on for that, which even doing things like lighter med ball throws, pre-training as far as your warm-up, maybe enough to turn it on to even uh -huh. combat that as well. So the, the, look at the number of stackable wins that happen compared to if this is just a linear based program, here's what you're supposed to do this yeah. on a piece of paper. You walk out feeling accomplished and you made the gains, you know, to be able to move forward, but they only went in one direction where this hits a, a multitude yeah. of different directions and gives a, I think it gives, while it's more chaotic, because you, it's harder to program because you really don't know what's going to happen because so much is auto-regulated. It provides more certainty mm. with an uncertain pro. It's yeah, hard yeah, to explain, but yeah. that, that's why, again, why I'm so biased on it. And even if it is block or linear, a lot of these components, I want to keep in it for that reason, because that auto-regulation for somebody at your level is the difference between being here and here, mm -hmm. or being here and being stagnant and not knowing what the hell to do next. Because you start looking here, 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 you start looking all over the place where the answer is really inside. You know, I'm pretty sure there's not much that we went over today you don't already know. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Is you're not yeah. looking here and thinking um, critically. You know, you're thinking, you know, I, I, like how do I, yes, you, you're thinking yeah. like a beginner, like trying yeah. to find the answers, how beginners would find yeah. answers. You find this, you go down this hole, you find mm -hmm. this, go down this hole, you find this, go down this hole. Instead of trying to figure out how you can look inside to be able to pull out all the knowledge you already know and apply it to yourself. Cause you can do it for other people. Yeah, you, yeah. you have programs, so you have issue. clients, yeah. you have kids you're working with. Yeah. You can do it with them and you are, you see things fucked up yeah. with them you change it immediately. Yeah. You just gotta have the confidence to do it in yourself and pay attention to that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, guys, I mean, we, I learned a lot, uh, kind of like he said, probably stuff that I knew, but just kind of going over it and, you know, hearing him go over his systems, his processes, uh, how I can be better as an athlete and as a coach. Uh, I, I do think the big takeaway is uh, for me, doing this kind of programming, how many variables you can assess in just like one session and attack versus if you are doing like a block periodization or a linear periodization, it takes a long time to figure out those things. Where in one session, we banged out a bunch of things and we got right to a solution uh, and we can test it, you know, next session. Uh, so, you know, I'm grateful for it. Always here learning a lot and uh, just, you know, appreciate you, you know, helping me out, man. Yeah. Um, as always, you guys can find him. Just type in Elite FTS anywhere on Google, social media, or under the bar and uh, you'll find Dave Tate and Elite FTS. They're pretty well known. And if you like the video, obviously like it, subscribe to the channel as well as their stuff, and we'll get on to the next video. All right, thanks guys. Thanks.